again, about the lawyer and what your lawyer is going through. So you're at present involved in what? Uh, six so different we've different currently got into a system of lawfare where, where lawfare yep. is used against anybody uh, who stands up against the narrative. Uh, I'm currently in five legal cases now. Can I just mention to you that last week my appeal was turned down on a ridiculous case where I'd lightly tapped someone on the shoulder and said, excuse me, and I was held up for assault. Liz, the- I, looking at you, I can see you're a hardened criminal. <laughs> The, the appeal judge, it gets, more, it gets more amusing if it was a Monty Python sketch, sketch. The appeal judge said, no, I can't hear the appeal. I don't have jurisdiction. I'm an appeal court judge, but I don't have jurisdiction to hear an appeal. I mean, how, how much crazier does this get? So what's happening with your lawfare? This is all messaging, isn't it? Well, um, well, uh, well what, what also happens is um, uh, a great cost to myself and... Uh, I've discovered that that our our whole justice system is corrupted. Yes. And so you've got you've got your whoever you're in court against against you with their lawyers. You've got the judge who will be against you if you're going against the narrative or or you need to be punished. But most times you'll also have your own lawyers secretly working against you as well to ensure that you only come out at one. That has happened. I, I, I can prove it. So in the Hancock case, my previous lawyers had mysteriously got the pleadings incorrect, which would have given Hancock a get out. I left those look at legal firm. They didn't think that I'd ever be able to get another lawyer. And not if I did get another lawyer, it would be another one who was in the club who would not, shall we say, carrying out best endeavours for me. But I did find I did find a lawyer who's outside the system, who who actually works for the client. Um, and on the day that, in court, we put the pleadings right so that Hancock couldn't get out of the case, and we're back in court on the 26th of November with Hancock. Um, and for Kiwis, Matt Hancock was the, the probably... The health, the, the health minister who brought in the jabs and... Uh, yeah. And also M- NG163 and the euthanizing of the elderly uh, in care homes. 35,000 of those went and they were put down as, as COVID patient, uh, deaths, obviously, respiratory suppressants. Um, well, on that day, I, it was um, in, in the spring, I had another parliamentary standards investigation announced into me. And three days later, my barrister had a, a bystanders council investigation put into him. Well, my barrister is a guy called Chris Newman, and he works out of his flat in London. Uh, he's a direct access barrister, uh, and he works under the name the the New Litigation. And he's pretty ruthless. So, when he had a bystanders investigation, he desired everyone he knew, including who he thought were his friends in the legal profession. Uh, and that's a direct subject access request. So he, he sent out dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And on the disclosure he got back, he found out that there was another planned, uh, not so he was going to be subject to three bar standards investi- uh, allegations of misconduct. And he found the legal firm who were instigating all of this with judges and barristers, including his friends, who we, people he thought he were his friends. And what we, what I can tell you is, I'm not going to name the firm, but uh, the senior partner of that firm that's instigated um, lawfare and regula- through the regulators, it's always how they do it through regulators, whether if you're a doctor, it's a GMC, if you're a barrister, it's going to be the Bar Council, if you're a solicitor in the UK, it's the Solicitor's Regulatory Authority, if you're a pilot, it'll be the Civil AV. All of these regulators have taken money from the WEF through the uh, Regulators Pioneer Fund. That's how they've got control of them. And, of course, they use them to punish people who go against the narrative or defend people in the case of barristers and solicitors who go against the narrative. My wife is divorcing me and has been divorcing me for quite a while uh, over what's gone over the last few years and not taking the bribe. This, there are no one more ruthless than family lawyers, divorce lawyers. Mm. I went to seven firms in London, uh, and in the U- and in my constituency, and even went to one that's run by a cousin by marriage, and no one would take me on because I'm blackballed, because I'm taking Hancock to court. 
couldn't get a lawyer to even represent me. What? And take money off. That's, that's how it is. That's, that's what happens when you're blackballed. Couldn't get a lawyer. I've having to, I'm, I'm a litigant in person in all of my cases, except for I've got a barrister who, who's helping me in court. No and one will take you. That off. is shocking. Yeah. So, so when we found this legal firm that had been orchestrating all the attacks on my barrister uh, for working with me, six weeks ago, Keir Starmer made the lead partner of that legal firm the head of the CPS, the prosecution service in the UK, a role which Starmer himself held until about 2013. He knows how powerful being the head of the uh, Criminal Prosecution Service, Crown Prosecution Services. Uh, you decide whether things go to trial, carry on being investigated or not. Um, and it's quite a coincidence that the person who's appointed to the head of that of, the, of that organisation was the uh, lead partner in the firm that's pushing people to and encouraging people to and organising people to attack my barrister. My God! Another coincidence. The level of corruption is just extraordinary. When you think that the arm of law was meant to be this honourable arm that would hold the politicians no. to account and expose those who are corrupt, and now they, and here in New Zealand, certainly have given into corruption. And what you said about lawyers, Andrew, what what is that? Just they're paid off as well. More more money going out to them. Just don't well, do a very good job for him or her. Just let her let her suffer. Well, I think in, suffer. Well, I think in some of them they're actually being kind to me, because if they worked for me, they'd have to be not working for me, and they don't want to be placed in that position. So every one of them gave an excuse. Well, there may be a conflict, you know, of interest. We may have dealt with someone in the past who may have a link to or whatever, uh, or it's yeah. because of your high profile, or we don't want the paperwork, or whatever. But they all had an excuse. And lots of them, it wasn't a, a normal excuse because they, I'd had a, a meeting with them and they were very keen. And then the excuse came out when they realised the consequences of, of working with me. And I honestly think that some of them didn't want to have to work against me. So we'd rather not get involved in that. So they just said, oh, we can't work with you. What is it that forces them? So they're worried about being examined by their ruling authority, as you say, and being debarred disbarred or or losing their careers is that what it is or is it bribery and corruption is it fear it's, it's, it's always it's, well if it's anything like the corruption in politics it, it's carrot and stick they they will we're dealing with people who have the ability to create money from nothing that doesn't exist it, it would be like me bribing people with buckets of air you know give them 10 20 so i mean they, they've they've got they've got unlimited resources they always try to carrot first they tried to bribe me uh, and then when you don't take the bribe, then they, they offer you the stick. Well, they use the stick on you. And that's, they don't want that. They don't want that. Most people don't want it. Well, can we put a call out right now to anybody in the UK who knows any decent family lawyer? We need somebody excellent for Andrew right now. Could could we have that? Could we have that person contact Andrew or, or Liz.gun at freenz.org? But it is depressing to think of the betrayal of their legal profession and the betrayal of the well, judicial. Even the barristers, Liz, even the barristers, Liz, they, they swear allegiance not to their clients and to, to uphold the law. But to the to the bar council, and um, yeah. So what we need, what we need, is a whole new. System. Bear in mind, MPs, we don't swear allegiance to the people, do we? No. We, we swear, allegiance, swear allegiance to the crown. We really should be. The, the the crown should be swearing allegiance to the people, and we should be swearing allegiance to the people also. So what's when your feeling being in the legal system? Is it? Do you feel now, looking back, what a waste of time? Or is it still something that you think you can wrestle into some kind of justice? What's your feeling? Well, um, lawfare is 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 deployed it's against real. people. Mm. Yeah, and 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 they can Look make. Trump. Look at Trump. They can, they, they, can, they can make the process as painful and as drawn out as they want to. There's always an excuse for delays and more cost, and uh, it, it eats up your time, your resources, and your money. It keeps you occupied, and and when you discover that. The most often, if it's a contentious case, your own lawyers will not be working for you. They're actually working against you. They'll put a bit of a show on, 
I mean, that's how crooked the whole system is. But is is any more of a pantomime than the than the left and right of politics, the Punch and Judy show we see in in our parliaments? It's exactly the same, isn't it? But just on a different in a different um, setting. Exactly the same principle. That's how it's been corrupted. Before the COVID response rollout, Andrew, I had no idea how many humans would me. be corrupt. How many yeah. are willing to be corrupted and not thinking on their, I don't know, their deathbeds, one day when they look at their children and their children say, what did you do to stop this tyranny? And they'll have to go, well, I accepted just a whole lot of money so I could have a bigger house and a faster car. I mean, does it's how how many corrupt people? You said to me before we... Um, came to air a few interviews ago, you talked about your sense that you in politics were surrounded by many traitors that you didn't realise. I've uncovered that half of the people who said they were helping me for the last two years were actually working against me. They are working for the WEF. And the problem is, Liz, again, I'll come back to the fact that they, they, these are the people who have the ability to create money from nothing because it costs them nothing. Money has no value to them, ultimately. Well... The problem is that most people have got a price and they can pay that price. And uh, I'm down to the point now that the only people who are any good to me, your price has got to be your life Mm. because otherwise you will be bought. Absolutely. How do you you sort that wheat from the chaff? There's so much chaff. There's so much. Well, they're they're pretty. The the thing is they're pretty desperate. They've got pretty desperate over the last 12 months and, and they've had to show themselves for what they really are. And when the when the chips are down, um, they show themselves, mm. um, and you've just got to distance yourself from these people. You can sell; they can sell their souls to the devil any time they want to, but they they're never going to be able to afford to buy it back. You're never going to get it back. That's gone. <laughs>